Will Deshaun Watson lead the Browns to a perfect 6-0 end to the season under his reign and bring them to the playoffs? That is what everyone is talking about in Cleveland right now. After the Browns win at home against the Bucks in overtime, the first time Tom Brady has ever lost a game in which he had a 7-point lead in the last minute of the game. But the 4-7 and seven Brownies, is that too deep of a hole for Deshaun Watson to carry out of them? Or can he be Superman and bring them to the playoffs? So we're going to talk about this in further length during today's show. I do want to hit on this quick news uh, tidbit that just came out not too long ago from Tom Pelissero that the Browns are releasing quarterback Josh Dobbs. Rest in peace, our sweet prince. With Deshaun Watson returning from suspension, they needed a roster spot. I was a little bit surprised by this. I thought it would be Kellen Mond. So remember back in August when the Vikings cut Kellen Mond and the Browns surprisingly claimed him off waivers, put him out on the active roster? Well, to me, that said, all right, they are thinking one year down the line where they know Deshaun Watson, excuse me, they know Jacoby Brissett is not going to be the backup next year. So they want to have a nice QB battle this year between Dobbs and Mond to be Watson's backup moving forward for years to come. I thought Dobbs was winning that battle, right? Keller Mond's been the healthy scratch all year long, but nope, it is Josh Dobbs who gets cut. So that is the news on that front. My Tennessee Vol, my fellow legend. See you later. All right, let's get to Deshaun Watson, though. So, Ian Rappaport this morning tweeting out what we all knew, that quarterback Deshaun Watson's reinstatement will become official this afternoon on the league personnel notice uh, per the NFL PR guy. So, he has been permitted to practice for since November 14th, so that's not any new information. But there was some people back in August that go, you know, it's not a guarantee he'll come back then. He has to be approved by the league to be reinstated, and that doesn't always happen. Well, it was happening this time. We all knew it. Deshaun Watson was not going to not get reinstated. So here's where I kind of stand on the whole mindset and belief of, hey, Deshaun Watson, can he go 6-0 and and take the Browns to 10-7 and into the postseason? There's going to be some rust, and I hate to be a bit of a rain cloud, but that's just how it works. When you don't play for all of 2021, and the first 12 games of 2022, I don't think you're going to come out there and throw 350 yards and four touchdowns. Now, the Browns have gotten by with 215 yards and one touchdown and one interception with Jacoby Brissett for stretches this season. So I think even with a rusty Deshaun Watson for the first game or two, they're not going to be sunk or anything. But you better believe I am all ready. Chips into the middle of the table on jumping in the pond. That is, the Browns are going to go 6-0 and with Deshaun Watson. They're going to be 10-7. and They're going to get the seventh seed in the playoffs. And they are going to be the team no one in the playoffs wants to face, right? They're going to be the team that got hot at the end of the year, like the Bengals did last year. I am there. Believe me. Whether or not that happens, I'm not too confident on the Browns being perfect with Deshaun Watson because while this defense did improve against the Bucks last week, I also saw that against the Bengals a couple weeks ago. And how did it work out after the bye? They sucked against Miami and Buffalo. So I'm not going to take one game and stretch it a mile the rest of the year and go, that's how they're going to play from here on out. But the big players are kind of rising to the top. Miles Garrett, Clutch sack in overtime against Tampa on Sunday. Watson's returning. Everyone's feeling some mojo. Everyone's feeling good about where this team is entering the last third of the year. So let me ask this question to you. We're going to look at some quotes from players in just a little bit. But this is the big question I got for you all today. What will the record be with Deshaun Watson at quarterback? With those just, just, just those six games, right? The Browns going to go... 6 and 0, 5 and 1, 4 and 2, 3 and 3. Let me know in the comments section below what your record prediction is. For Jacoby Brissett, I said the Browns would go 6 and 5, and if not for the Jets game, I would have been one game off, right? They would have been 5 and 6. With Watson, I'm going to try and speak it into existence. Give me 6 and 0. Is it going to happen? It's unlikely, but I don't give a damn. On Victory Monday, which we have not had Victory Monday since September 12th, right? The other two wins came on a Monday night against Pittsburgh, so that's Victory Tuesday. 
And then a Thursday night against Cincinnati. And Victory Friday, no one cares about your team on Friday after Thursday night football. But we're going to enjoy the Kool-Aid of Victory Monday. And I'm going to say 6-0 brownies. All right. Here are the quotes I was talking about. So Albert Breer from Sports Illustrated had an interesting write-up, and I thought this little bit was worth sharing. Privately, staff and players have expressed a lot of optimism over what they've seen in practice over the last few weeks and what it's going to mean for the team. I am going to pump the brakes a little bit on everyone on the whole what he's done in practice. How often do we hear during training camp, this guy's looking amazing? And then we never see or hear from them during the regular season. So for that reason, I'm not going to, you know, go all the way to the top of Everest because of what we've heard and seen in practice. I want to see it materialize in the games. But the hype, how can you not get drunk on it right now, right? How can you not buy in on this team showing some life with their back truly against the wall? I mean, it was against the wall against the Dolphins. It was backed up against the Bills. But this was it. You lose to the Bucks. You have eight losses. Nine and eight's not going to get it done. At least now, you do hold a sliver of a chance, which is only perfection. No room for error. In case you don't remember, Deshaun Watson is a very good quarterback in the National Football League. So he did not play last year, as we know, and this year has not played. But go back to 2020 when he was the NFL passing leader on a team that did not fare well. Now, hopefully that will not repeat in Cleveland. But that, is, that does serve as a good reminder of throwing for 4,800 yards and 33 touchdowns doesn't mean you're going to win 10 or more games. It didn't work for the Texans then. They need a defense, or they needed a defense, and the Browns still need a defense too. But look at those stats right there. I want to compare them to Browns record books here. So if you took Deshaun Watson's three seasons, excluding his first year with the ACL injury, 2018, 2019, 2020, and you inserted them into the Cleveland Browns' all-time passing leaders. Here's what you get. Deshaun Watson's 2020 season would be number one in the Browns' record book. Number two, Deshaun Watson's 2018 season. He would hold the top two spots. And then the NFL MVP in 1980, Brian Seip, 4,100 yards, would be third. And then 1982 Seip as well. And then 2019 Watson would be fifth. I mean, Deshaun Watson's three seasons in the NFL would all be top five seasons in Brown's record books. I don't think enough people are really letting this sink in that the Cleveland Browns are going to have a quarterback take the field this Sunday who is already the best quarterback in the franchise history if you moved his numbers from where he was before. This is something the Browns have never had before. The most important position in sports, they finally have someone. And it's not just a good player. It's an all-star, right? It is someone who, when he's at the top of his game, is a top five quarterback in the NFL. I mean, that is very, very exciting to say out loud here. All right, now speaking of quarterbacks and whatnot, and looking at the 1980 Brownies, this part is for subscribers only, so you got to be subscribed to engage on this one. But comment who the quarterback was when you first became a fan, right? Was it, oh boy, we can go back some ways. Brandon Whedon, uh, any five-year-olds are watching this, Baker Mayfield. Let me know who the Browns quarterback was when you first became a Browns fan. Moving on here, how about this quote from Wyatt Teller? You can't stack the box, right? That's what they've been doing against our run. They've been blitzing. Good luck. He'll make you pay. And Wyatt Teller is spot on. I mean, I don't have the tw all 22. Thanks, NFL uh, Plus, from yesterday's game just yet. I won't till Tuesday. But go back to the week before against the Bills. Look how crowded the box is. This was a run that was a loss of three, by the way. I mean, there is no one outside of one safety who is more than five yards off the line of scrimmage. Well, what about the week before when they went to Miami and the Dolphins knew we can blitz because they're not going to beat us over the top? You see those three linebackers, all three of the guys circled in yellow? Yeah, they all went for the, they all came in on the blitz. They all went after the quarterback, the running back. They all knew we, the, the Browns are not going to have a good enough quarterback to beat us over the top. Wyatt Teller is spot on. That will change with Deshaun Watson. All right, we're going to talk more about Watson and some other stats and things you guys should know about in just a moment. But we've got an awesome deal right now with our friends over at Fanatics. Holiday season is here. It's not even around the corner. It is here. 
Do not be behind on your Christmas, your holiday shopping. Check out this awesome Browns hoodie. It's on sale right now, chatsports.com slash CLE hoodie. I've got that link for you guys in the comments and the description of today's show. Make sure you check it out. Give it to yourself. A little trick I love to do. Just get, buy it for yourself and say it's from your dog, right? And then all of a sudden your dog got your credit card and bought your favorite hoodie for, your, for yourself. Get it today. That link, chatsports.com slash CLE hoodie, is in the comments and the description. All right, let's look at this quote from David Njoku, by the way. I like the Teller quote included in Teller's write-up on Sports Illustrated. Oh, my God. I can't wait. He's a beast. That's all I'm going to say. I ain't going to get into any more detail. Can't spoil it. And David Njoku, I hope you are speaking words of wisdom here because the Browns wide receivers this year, outside of the top two, have not seen much production. Now, I say that after Anthony Schwartz had the game of his life yesterday that beautiful run by the way the Browns are 2-0 and when day uh, when Anthony Schwartz uh gets a rushing attempt so Kevin Stefanski I know you're watching this during the team meeting let's give 10 the football a little bit more on some runs here but let's get back to the point at hand here and that is that with Deshaun Watson these numbers they're going to skyrocket right he's going to spray the football all over the field and he's got a fantastic arm and even better accuracy and most of all unlike Brissett who I love he doesn't have cinder block for feet, so he's going to be able to extend plays, right? He's going to be able to get the ball out under duress. I mean, David Njoku, he's got to be jumping up and down like he is in the picture right there. With Deshaun Watson returning, he's going to continue what's been the best season of his NFL career so far. Two touchdowns, and man, was that second touchdown a big one. I mean, one of the best catches we've seen all year. One hand to grab fourth down just the situation itself made it awesome and then just the catch itself really exponentially better here but with that being said and kind of going off what Njoku said there who do you think will benefit the most from Watson's return or debut I should say instead who do you think it is I've got a name in nine I'm mean, name in mind let me know who you're thinking down below what about Kareem Hunt someone that's been pretty bottled up this season Right, had a good start to the year, but has especially the middle portion of the year lost a whole bunch of uh, carries and picked it up lately. But I think Kareem Hunt working in that spread offense, where when he's on the field, defenses won't know what to expect. He could really see his numbers tick up with Deshaun Watson on the field. All right, before we sign off, we've got a Super Chat MVP I want to give some love to, and that is William Elliott. Appreciate you, William. You were awesome during our live watch party on Sunday against the Bucks. You are our Super Chat MVP. Thank you for all of your contributions to the show. Hope you enjoyed being a part of our MVP Wall of Fame here. All right, that is it for today's show. Going to sign off. Going to see you all tomorrow on Victory Tuesday. We're going to stretch this bad boy out because it's been that long. But the Brownies, they are alive. Maybe not well, but alive with Deshaun Watson returning this Sunday.